And now, only on KGRA Radio, this is the Starborn Connection. Wise. And good evening, everybody, and welcome from across the USA, from around the world, from everywhere in the solar system, across the Milky Way, and out into interstellar space. In a few thousand years or so, you guys way out there will finally get to hear the show, but don't call in because we're not here. The Starborn Connection has arrived, and you're all welcome uh, to come on into our virtual studio out here in the ether. I am your host, Michael Austin Melton, and tonight the Starborn Connection will cover a few very important topics. Uh, We'll get to them shortly. I want to remind you that the Starborn Connection comes to you live via KGRA Alternative Talk Radio, the absolute best connection in the multiverse, and to the most accurate information via all of our amazing shows and knowledgeable hosts. You can check them all out at www.kgraradio.com, www.kgraradio.com. All right, allow me to introduce my illustrious co-host, Julia Yesner weiss and our producer host, Bill Skywatcher. Guys, how are you tonight? Doing great. All right. So All excited about away. the show. Yes. <clears throat> we got a lot to talk about. Yep. Do you have any news or information we need to uh, share before we get going? Mm-hmm. Nothing? Well, I'll say one thing. Um, with the devastation of Hurricane Harvey and, of course, uh, Hurricane Irma, uh, I just want to say that if anybody can help, those that are in need right now, you can go to redcross.org. And I say that because I was covering the storm live on YouTube because I have a lot of family and friends down in uh, Florida. And I just felt the, 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 the need to help those others in need. So I, w- I actually donated live when I was uh, streaming. So I'm just saying if anybody can uh, help those that are out there that are really suffering right now, and it's a lot of misery down there in both areas, in Texas, Louisiana, and of course Florida, please go to the redcross.org if you can donate. Anything is going to be helpful. Beautiful. Yes, indeed. Uh, let me tell you, the islands need it. Florida needs it. Texas, it's spreading. Mm. Indeed. Okay, just have to wet the throat. Okay, on this edition, Stormer Connection, we need to look at a few things. Number one, is a presentation of new contact information from Ilona and Ivana Podraska and EBE Ali. Some of it strange, some of it which fits right into our troubled world today. Next, we're going to take an in-depth look at Hurricanes Harvey and Irma. We're going to discuss the unbelievable data collected from both storms and then the impact on the spiritual lives of millions of people and indeed whole societies in the islands in the aftermath of those two diabolical storms. We're going to ask why did it happen and how? More importantly, how? Was it an act of nature or was there an intervention of some sort and from who? All right, let's get started. The sisters Podraska have quite a relationship with an extraterrestrial biological entity named Oli. They have been quite willing to share it, all for the sake of the truth. This latest installment is no different. Remember, however, I have to tell you that translation issues make it really hard sometimes to get the order of words correctly. Or maybe the exact meaning right. When I get this info, uh, I do my best to kind of interpret uh, Ilona's broken English and try to put it together. Um, She takes it from him and converts it uh, to English for me. Uh, According to the sisters now, Oli approves all of what we are doing to get this information out. It's up to you to see if or how this data affects your lives. Okay, now, here we go. We're going to 
get to this message here. Very interesting stuff. Oli opens talking about the hydrosphere and its recovery. I think he's talking about our oceans and the recovery, which might refer to cleaning or reoxygenating the oceans. <clears throat> the ability of the ocean, he says, to clean itself is fading. And this is being deliberately induced to destroy the living particles in the hydrospheric center of pressure. Now, I'm not sure. Is Oli talking about the deliberate extinction of creatures in our oceans? It's not clear. He mentions that there are nanoparticles circulating and orbiting around the vacuum hydrosphere. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that means around the Earth. It's a vacuum up there over our oceans, possibly. And the vacuum must mean, like I said, they're in orbit around the planet. And he mentioned it seems to be industrialized or made to function the way it does. He talks about dry oxygen and that it strengthens or replenishes the oxygen that is lost. But Oli and his crew do not have enough dry oxygen to strengthen the hydrosphere or repair the oceans. Oxygen is necessary because Oli says... It is important to our life down here. And that, my friends, is an understatement. Moving on, Oli mentions that there is chaos under the leadership of scientists in the underground. And I think he is talking about underground installations like what exists at Area 51 and or Dolce. He says that they are developing new technology for the control of bio-robotization. Uh, I think we would call them cyborgs, kind of like that. And uh, this is referring to the cloning process I mentioned in an earlier transmission. Oli mentions that in this underground there is another dimension available to the scientists working for research purposes. He says... The future belongs to her, and I assume it means our future depends on the outcome of whatever research they are doing in the underground. Oli says that he and his crew are worried about Earth's source, which he clarifies as nutrients and the like. They are not approving of biorobots created by other structures, maybe creatures, I'm not sure. Uh, Oli also says that people are becoming aware and are beginning to worry in large numbers, growing much like a bubble, spreading in all dimensions. He says the human mind has found itself trapped in a bubble from which it is difficult to return to the experience before this perception. Uh, well, you know, I thought about this and it's kind of like the world is changing to a degree that we are so used to what goes on today, war, strife, terrible storms, etc., that it's getting harder to connect back to a more peaceful time. I, that's my interpretation. It's up to you to find that meaning for you. And, and uh, like I said, it leaves us with a lot of questions, doesn't it? it you know, it, he refers to thinking like a swarm, and this seems to be reference to the hive mind. Developing this type of thinking among the population is against natural law, he says. The examination in the earth, he says, is a severe threat. The underground wants to destroy space for Ali's ship. In other words, they know he's there uh, and they want to make it hard for Ali's ship to function properly. And he tells us who is doing this. It is the entities who cooperate with the structure in the underground. It hinders them and they use, and this is his words, turbo waves controlled through computer for long distance control. Control of our thoughts causing us to be against Oli and his crew. Uh, your guess is probably as good or better than mine. Now, just to wrap up this little section, there's one more after this. Oli tells us that these entities are from a different system that they were not aware of before. Oli admits they don't know everyone out there. And, you know, as he says, some entities are unknown to us. Now, a ufologist named Tom Conwell posed a question to Oli through Ivana. He says, will there be 
destruction on earth. Now, Oli answers that destruction will not happen all at once or immediately. It will be more like a transition or rearrangement with new law in an artificial system. And I'm not sure how to interpret that myself. It seems clear, but when you think of it, it's a bit muddled. He then says that it is not a given that humans can see into the future, but there are people selected for that. He then tells us that many of our scientists are associated with reptilioids, or I guess we call them reptilians. Not good news, people. <clears throat> then it seems Ali goes off into a tangent as he says... Your president of America is funny. He is spreading panic. We can say <laughs> no, no more about this for, for Ivana's safety. In other words, he can't say anything more about what's going on uh, with the president and his humor and the panic because they really are afraid of Ivana's safety. He, he says, be careful if you own a computer. They can get to you that way. He, he basically told us this before, but this is, you know, something a little bit more in detail. He says you must protect yourself, protect your soul. They can manipulate you. Only reassures us that he and his crew have oversight of it all, but they too can be duped or fooled. We must keep our energy charged. If not, the effort of other entities, not so good can steal our energy. Oli says to believe your consciousness. They can steal your identity as well as our identity, Ali's identity. Um, uh, through computers, right. Oli tells us they can protect themselves because they are not of flesh and bone. And this is new. I've never heard him talk about this. They're not made of flesh and bone when they're here. They can dematerialize themselves and move away. Now, Ali tells us that there are more species from other galaxies that do not occupy Earth in large quantity. These other uh, entities are located on three other planets in our system. Mars, as you call it, was populated before the Earth was. Now, that, I say, does support what some of our scientists theorize and what some of our people are finding out about, uh, you know, uh, things that they're finding on Mars that resemble stuff that we have here on Earth. Um, their, their life on the Red Planet was way in the past. A few individuals, he says, have joined your Earth system and elsewhere in the surrounding planets, Mars, Saturn, and Neptune are occupied. Venus, however, is a dead planet. Oli says our Mother Earth is alive, but it laments in its greatness. This is <laughs> waxing poetic, I think. Uh, people have material fluctuations, and I think he means that we care more about things than nature at times, and overall... People do not realize they are in a big universe and that there might just exist threats from somewhere else. They also give no thought to the technology that exists from our scientists underground in many locations. Now, Oli wraps up with a bit of a review. He says, be careful of manipulation. Materialism is not a spiritual system. However, some think materialism is a spiritual system. So pay attention to the people around you. They can and will steal your identities. <clears throat> and to wrap it up, he said uh, that we should move away now, talking, of course, about Oli and his uh, compatriots on, on the ship. We should move away now. We have other purposes or work to do. Oli must end now. We watch the hydrosphere. We should move away. We have another task. And he ends up by saying, keep your consciousness in your hand, which I think means, you know, <laughs> keep an eye on what's going on inside of yourself. He then exits with Alleluia and Ooh, Ooh. 
and that's it. Wow, so that's whacked out. <laughs> uh, well, it, it's it's kind of different. It's all over the place, but I think yeah, there's is. a couple of really important things in there. Um, first of all, Alona uh, uh, told me that this was kind of a rush job. Uh, he Oli couldn't stay very long for one reason or another, so I guess he tried to throw things in, and and he's a lot like us, you know. He gets confused and mixes things up once in a while. But I think that, you know, some of the things that he says, like, for example, you know, it's very significant when he says, keep your consciousness in your hands. Um, and that some people think that materialism is a spiritual system. That is true. Um, some people do. They worship money. Um, and that's not a good thing. So uh, what do you guys think? Any, any kind of thoughts? Well, I think he's saying to be conscious. Uh -huh. I think that's his – just to be conscious and to be aware, that's what I'm getting okay. from, you know, when he said keep your consciousness in your hand. And um, and I don't know if he's a third – I guess uh, – uh, Eleventh dimension. Eleventh dimension, okay, yes. because he doesn't speak about the ascension process. So not all beings, you know, every being, a lot of the di different beings have different purposes. Uh, usually the Galactic Federation beings, the Syrians, the Lyrans, and the Pleiadians, they're on board with the ascension process. But there may be other beings that are helping us that are not necessarily aware of it or don't want to go into it with her because it's too deep. They just want to get the material stuff out, like what's actually going on. Yeah, that's but, part of becoming awake and aware. But but um, I, I think there's they a lot of... to the interpretation, is what I'm getting. That there's a lot lost in language, but we get it. It's like there's stuff going on with science and government, you know, connected to these reptilian races as some of the races are good but i guess they're working with the ones that aren't and they're trying to um they're doing it now i think um out in the open i mean they're replacing body parts with mechanical parts um but these are still human beings with with consciousness and thought maybe they're trying to create you know, a race of slaves or super soldiers that, you know, don't have a lot of conscious. They're just well, given orders. So well, but they have they have a physical being, but they also are, are mechanical inside, like both, like a sideboard. Well, what, what I get from some of the earlier stuff and some of the stuff that I haven't talked about yet is uh, uh, that these um, bio-robots... Bio um, are basically being created to replace some of us. And in other words, it's kind of like, um, you know, we're going, to, we're having this biological mechanical entity that's going to take our place. I don't know whether they're going to inject our consciousness into it or oh if it's my going God. to you know, be well, something heard, new. You know, I, I don't know. I've heard about leaders being cloned. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, you know, it's, Look, as far as I'm concerned, it's not really true. I'm just stating what I, I've read and heard uh, from a lot of other people is that um, certain presidents and kings and queens and whatever have been replaced with clones. And these clones, if you notice, all the presidents that come in, they age like so rapidly. Oh, God, yeah. And I think that's just the pressure of the job. Oh, that's stress. Yeah, that's but, definitely stress. Um, they say once they're cloned, the clones age very quickly and die very quickly. So, so what do you think, though? Uh, I just got to pine in quickly because you touched yes, on – Yes, I knew you would. Yeah, you guys yeah. touched on a whole bunch of things. First of all, we live in the environment where, where the media is used as a means of manipulation. Look what's going on with social media. And right. I always fear that if we are in, in an environment where there is the possibility of eventual contact and it becomes public, we have to think about the fear porn that's going to be out there Absolutely. due to the contact. And we also have to watch for false flags. That's always a concern, especially oh, absolutely. with DLZT. Now, you also touched on something, uh, Michael, about transhumanism that we hear a lot yes. about. 
right that we have to watch out for yes sure. and that's also losing our soul our life essence and that's exactly and that's what he's talking about exactly I think. that's that's all i just wanted to say because that was you guys hit on all the the important facets of that oh yeah yeah just just very fascinating i i like the way um, you know, he interprets destruction as a transition or rearrangement. That's sometimes that can be even more scary because, uh, you know, what are they going to transition? What are they going to rearrange? And what does that mean for us? Exactly. <laughs> it could also be a translation thing. You know? well, that's, that's, like, that, well, I, that's my disclaimer <laughs> in the beginning. You know, I'm I know uh, I know, yeah. know Ilona is doing the best to turn it into English and I'm doing my best to clean it up uh, even more. Um, but I, I think, um, you know, there's a few things you can take with you. I mean, you know, be careful of manipulation. Um, keep your consciousness in your hand. People can uh, steal your identity through the computer. In other words, if you have a – for example, if you have well, a that's camera. Identity. That's identity <laughs> fraud. Well, I mean, if you have a camera on your computer, on your laptop, uh, the government, if they want to, can uh, program that, reprogram that so that they can watch what's going on. And I he- never undress in front of my computer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, that's, you know, and that's good. It, it sounds <laughs> sounds silly, you know, but. but no, it's, right. I'm telling you, you never know who's going to be watching, you know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. But, uh, you know. I think that we all have to find a commonality that we all can come together as far as humanity in, in a whole. Because yeah. with everything that's going on, whether it's social or political, it, it, there has to, we have to find that common ground to coexist because we have to think of the, the long range here, the long term. Because obviously we can't stay on Earth forever. So eventually, oh, we're going to outgrow the planet. Yeah, and we're going to have to go off world, and we're going to have to find a way to get along. Because my concern is, and I always use this as an example, if a planet was uh, nearby where it was pretty much like it, it was in the Goldilocks, the, the habitable zone, you right. can imagine all the countries, and they all cry that they don't have money funding for space exploration. But I bet you anything that they would all be running to make claim on that territory to make it their own. Yeah. Exactly. So that's always a concern. Just another thing for humans to fight over, you know. Exactly. (laughs) Property lines on Alpha Centauri. Yeah, uh, Just bizarre. (laughs) I don't know. Agreed. Well, well, anyway, let's let's go to, uh, you know, uh, our our main topic tonight. But before I introduce the main subject. I want to share a few station-oriented facts and I think you'll be very interested in. Uh, KGRA is in the process of growing and what uh, what KGRA is going to become is, is just going to be amazing. Let me just say that if you're listening via our website, I want you to know that you can listen to us on Talk Stream Live, tune in, iTunes, Spreaker, Shoutcast, iHeartRadio, and even more to come. We also have Android and Apple, iOS, fully integrated apps ready for you to download in their stores, respectively, and uh, you are in touch with everything on KGRA. So uh, just keep that in mind as we we move forward. Um, And you can download them right now. They're available right now. Okay, before I uh, turn it over to uh, everyone for a discussion, I want to lay out some hurricane stats. These are records that were made in the month of September uh, and uh, earlier or uh, later with uh, Irma. The question to focus on is, were these hurricanes simply statistical outliers in terms of wind, flooding, and the like? Or was it global warming that due to the ocean's rising temperatures, remember the water was 80 plus degrees, that's like a high octane fuel. Or was it, med- uh, well, was it weather manipulation perpetrated by the powers that be? So think about that, and I'm going to read some stats, and then we're going to talk about this thing. All right. Harvey. Harvey was a catastrophic flood disaster in southeast Texas. Harvey made landfall as a Category 4 hurricane 
with winds of 130 miles per hour near Rockport, Texas. Harvey meandered around southern Texas for days as a weakening hurricane and tropical storm. Now, as a tropical storm, Harvey dropped 40 to 52 inches of rainfall in some parts of southeast Texas and southwest Louisiana. All-time continental U.S. tropical cyclone rain records were broken. Harvey triggered flash flooding in parts of Arkansas, Kentucky, and Tennessee from August 31st to September 1st. Harvey's long-lived odyssey has come to an end, but its catastrophic impacts, listen, they're going to be felt for weeks, months, years to come. Now, Irma. Irma spent three days as a Category 5 hurricane. No other hurricane has ever sustained that much power for that long. It had winds over 185 miles per hour for 37 hours. That's another record that was completely obliterated. Irma is almost was was almost 400 miles wide. Now I lived through Hurricane Andrew. I was right there, and that was bad enough. I can't imagine what 180 miles per hour winds feel you, like. You couldn't the, stand I'm, up. It's you terrible. I was I was yeah. there with Andrew, and it's yeah. it's scary. Around 26 million people could be affected by Irma with a total damage of over $120 billion. So far, uh, the evacuees have still not been able to go back to their homes in some places in Texas, in Florida, and on the islands. This is the first time in history that the continental U.S. has had two hurricanes that are Category 4 or above make landfall in the same year. Now, these facts you can interpret in many different ways. You know, you can say it's weather manipulation, you can say it's global warming, and you can also say it's just data, outliers, uh, exceptions. But there's so much more to talk about. And Julia, you said you have some... I have a lot, yeah. Let, let's go with that. Okay, after a after break. Oh, yeah, that's right, 1028. Ladies and gents, we are going to go to a break right now. We're going to be right back, however. Uh, we're going to sell some stuff so we can keep the station moving. Uh, you're listening to KGRA Radio. This is the Starborn Connection radio show. See you on the other side, folks. Hey there. Quick question for you. Would you be okay with more energy, more endurance, thicker, healthier hair, a better mood, reduced appearance of wrinkles, improved sleep, improved blood pressure and cholesterol profiles, improved vision, improved memory? Okay then. Well now, have you heard of Nature's Youth RSF? It's from the anti-aging experts at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. See, at Nature's Youth, they understand exactly what it means to provide top quality health products. And Nature's Youth customers not only improve their health, they know they're also providing their body with the right nourishment to maintain that peak performance and fight the aging process. If health, wellness, and nutrition are what you desire, choose Nature's Youth RSF. I did. You see, you're going to get older. It's just up to you how you feel when you get there. Get started today. Nature's Youth RSF. Simple to use, simple to order. Go to naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. You read about UFOs, strange creatures, and ghosts. You watch videos about them. Do you know how to investigate them? Chase Kletsky does. For 20 years, she's been Indiana Jones and Laura Croft rolled into one. The real hunter of Bigfoot, ghosts, and UFOs. She goes everywhere, from remote woods to ghost-infested buildings to the highlands of South America, hunting down strange things in our world. Now she's written a book to show you how it's done. Co-authored with UFO researcher Richard Dolan, Chase lays it out. How to prepare, what to bring, interviewing witnesses, doing a stakeout, handling evidence, and documenting it the right way. Get Admissible, the field manual for investigating UFOs, paranormal activity, and strange creatures. Learn more at richarddolanpress.com. 
Also available on Kindle. Every two seconds, someone needs blood. Whether it's a natural disaster or one single child suffering from illness, the American Red Cross stands ready to supply blood when it's most needed. But blood is a perishable product. Therefore, it must continuously be replenished. You can safely donate blood every 56 days. The need is constant and patients are waiting. Call your American Red Cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE to schedule your life-saving appointment. Please give blood today. Patients are depending on you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. We are the contact for alternative research topics. The Planet, KGRARadio.com. Welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, We're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, hurricanes right now. But I I want you to know, uh, before we go into that, we have so much news about the station and everything else. KGRA archives are now free and readily available for download. You can visit KGRARadio.com and click on the archives tab on the main menu to gain access to your favorite show archives, download and listen on demand from your desktop or any mobile device, or save them for your children to listen to and their children. Oh, my God. What information. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Julia, let's let's talk about hurricanes. Oh boy, I have so much information. <laughs> I've been putting it together all week, kind of. I mean, I've been listening to everything um, spiritually. I've been really meditating and praying, you know, with the groups of people to lessen the hurricane. So let me um, talk about uh, the hurricane itself was supposed to hit Florida as a Category Five. So there were a lot of people meditating every day in groups um, trying to fizzle out the hurricane. And uh, we, we were envisioning colder water. We were envisioning it hitting land before it gets to Florida, like a landmass coming out, like a landmass, you know, because wow. it's supposed to slow down when it's on land. That would have been a bit scary. <laughs> Well, we wanted it. It was like a mental thing. Like, right, like right. We're, we're, uh, so uh, we were going inside the hurricane to relieve the pressure or balance the pressure so it would dissipate. So the funny thing was it, it was supposed to go – it wasn't supposed to hit Cuba. It was supposed to – now, hurricanes, you can't really 100% predict exactly where it's going to go. Look no, at all the different can't. models to the very first day before right. it hit. Barbuda. I mean, nobody knew. So, and we didn't even know, you know, where it was, you know, they predicted it to go straight up in the center of Florida and in, or hit Miami, but it actually went west, which they weren't expecting. And um, which actually was a good thing, not for the people out west, but if it hit Miami um, and just gone, it, it would have been horrendous. But um, how it, it um, it did actually go from a Category 5 down to a 3 because it hit, hit the beaches of Cuba. It didn't go all the way into Cuba, but it, Cuba slowed it down. And then um, it – and it was also slow moving. That's the problem with these storms is, is when they do hit, um, they just pour – and both Texas and both Florida – we're pretty flat. There's not no hills, nothing. So this water is, is, you know, what happened in Houston. Oh my God, you know. But it just stayed there. It didn't move. Yeah, I've hur- never hurricanes. Seen a storm not move like right. hurricanes. Hurricanes. Hurricanes require other weather systems to push them along. You know the the nature of that cyclonic storm. Uh, you oh, know, yeah. It would stay in one place until something pushes it out. Yeah, of the lake. So- but there was nothing there. There was nothing there. And so anyway, Irma, um, they were predicting these 15-foot surges. Um, Now, I have a condo in Miami. It's about two miles from the beach. Uh, We we survived every hurricane. It's a very strong condo. Um, But a 15-foot surge would go in two miles. It would definitely go in that far, believe it or not. So we were worried about My condo actually is fine. Um, and, um, 
but what had happened is uh, even the storm surges were less. They were a lot less than they were predicting. So it went a little toward the west. And, you know, it was devastating to the Caribbean, and that is horrible. Um, it was devastating to the Keys, but it could have been, if it, it hit as a category, I think it was a four, and then it went down to a three. And then it went, I think it was a one by the time it went up to Tampa. I think that's how it went. But can you imagine if it was a category five, and it hit in the middle of Florida, and it went straight up. That I'm telling you, the difference of damage from a Category 3 to a Category 5 is exponential. So my condo wouldn't be there. And um, nobody's house would be there. I mean, it would be... I mean, it took... At, at a, as a Category 5, it took uh, cement houses, these houses in the Caribbean are strong. They're built with these big cement blocks. The foundations are strong. They rip them apart. So that would have happened in the whole state of Florida, which is how many millions of people? I'm not really sure, Mike. How many millions of people are in Florida? Boy, I did not research that. I mean, there was an island <laughs> of 1,500 people. A lot and of it people. Totally got people. destroyed. Can you imagine um, maybe five or six million people? And where oh, are sure. they going to go? Yeah. And, and well, now I, they have the problem. I think there are that many down there now looking for a place. It's terrible. Yeah, I mean, all these people have to go to another state. I mean, and so we really, really lucked out. And even though it didn't dissolve, the damage was so much less in in America. And, and the death toll uh, was 36 people, I think, altogether which if you compare it with hurricanes in the past, before we had radar and before we had, I mean, there were thousands, there may have been 3,000 people. Uh, I think Galveston, 1,500 people died in Galveston mm -hmm. uh, back in, was it the 30s or 40s? So, you know, nobody should die. Even one person is too much, but think about it. I mean, 34 people, it could have been in the thousands if it was Category 5. And then you have all these people that are displaced in the millions. So um, so anyway, I really think it did, all the meditating and everything did. Now, as far as um, the, the HARP, everybody's talking about HARP, which is H- dot a dot a dot r dot p it's not harp the instrument i i tend to spell it that way sometimes <laughs> but it's i got a, i was listening to a uh channeling and i forget who it was i only listened to a few people but because of hurricane irma i was listening to more people to get like a consensus consensus of what so you know the question was asked to this entity and i i I think it was a palladium. What um, what was it manipulated? And they said it was a mixture of everything. It was a natural natural storm, which always happens around this time. Uh, the intensity. Now this is interesting because I've heard this from a few different people. The intensity is because of the. It was on the news every day. So the whole country, the whole world's watching this. And they're telling you it's going to be 15-foot surges. And they're telling you. So the fear and the concentration, everybody's thinking about this storm all the time. So the fear and the thinking actually contributes to it being bigger. Also, um, you know, it, it's you, – you don't really think about it, but, God, you know, the – the whole world's putting their energy to, to being afraid of this hurricane. So it's actually strengthening it, which makes kind of spiritual sense. But, but anyway, they said, and this really freaked me out because I'm like, hmm, that doesn't, you know, maybe, maybe so. They said harp doesn't really do that. Harp is totally different now. It used to, they were experimenting with rep the weather manipulation there's another organization and they didn't mention the name but they you know it's definitely the the secret government or the government behind the government the black project government so there's really like no name for it except it's the black government they're the ones that do the weather manipulation uh 
and they do it as far as the direction of where the, where they want something to go. So they had like this drought in California, which caused all these fires. And I'm talking fires in Washington, Oregon, California, Colorado, Montana. I mean, it was crazy. And there was no rain. My girlfriend lives in uh, right outside of Seattle. They have rain every day. There was no rain for 50 days this summer. Mm, I mean, that's insane. Yeah. That never happens. So this is a very unprecedented. It almost looks like we're being attacked. So anyway, what I was telling the guys, um, Michael and Bill, before um, – this just happened today. I was just, well, I don't watch a lot of the news, but because of the hurricane, I all the different ones that are coming up, Jose, and you know, I've been steadily watching the news, and it just so happens I really like Rachel Maddow, and I haven't watched her in a while because um, I really try to stay away from all that political stuff, but um, she was talking about the hurricane. Then she got into this other story that I completely forgot about, but I think... I think they could be related as far as the manipulation. So if you guys remember, I don't know, um, it was about a month ago, and it actually was in the newspaper. That's the first time I got the Philadelphia Inquirer, and it was on it, and I couldn't believe it. I was reading this, and I'm like, they're talking about this stuff? There were 21 people, 21 ambassadors or diplomats that went to Cuba, and these are the first um, diplomats that we've had since 1959. Uh, so um, I think it was a few months ago they started getting sick to the point, and this is, um, they were literally, and this is, oh man, this freaks me out because it, this is really like a movie. They were getting, they would hear sounds really mm. loud sounds and some of them are deaf uh permanently deaf some of them have a little bit of brain damage um some of them have a lot of you know get nauseous and different symptoms but they've gone away and the last thing that happened was last month she said so all together it was about 21 people uh they would get they would hear the sounds in their office or they would hear the sounds in their hotel rooms or their houses. They have there's they didn't all live in the same place. They had actual houses. They didn't live in a big embassy. They had different hotels. And this is the weird thing. They would lie down on their bed, hear the horrible sound. It would affect them. They would get up out of their bed and not hear the sound anymore. They would lie back down and hear the sound. Oh, get wow. up again. As if there was a wall between where their bed was. And, and also it happened in the office where they'd be at their desk, hear this sound. And she didn't go into the explanation of what the sound was. It was just a loud sound. And they'd get up, walk away, and like there's a wall in front of their desk. And this is freaky. So this is Rachel Maddow on, on MSNBC who has huge amount of people. And, you know... <laughs> You go on Facebook, you go you go online, you have all these people with constant conspiracy stuff. Nobody's talking about this. So I'm like, so then I thought my first my first um, inclination was it's not the Cubans. No, they want trade with us. They want they invited us there. They want to trade with us. Um, actually, uh, the Cubans uh, contacted the uh, FBI and wanted them to come down to do a joint task force to find out what was going on. Because obviously it's just the ambassadors or the diplomats, the American diplomats. It's not the Cuban people that are complaining about this. So um, they said they're not responsible and they want to be a part of the, their concern. What I think, there was a lot of negative... Um, when Obama connected with Cuba, there was a lot of people in the government that did not like that. They didn't want us to be, um, because Cuba can't really be controlled. They don't like that. So I, my instinct was that it was an inside job, black government or black hats, that they were doing this. So we would blame the Cuban government and, and go back to the way it was. No, no, 
you know, nothing. So anyway, that, that was just my thought. And I'm thinking if they can do that, and this is on the news. So this is, and here it is. Things are getting unveiled and nobody's listening because nobody's talking about this. So anyway, um, if they can do that. Uh, oh, and they think it's, okay, Bill, I'm trying to think if I can say this in the techie, most techie way available. <laughs> Give it a shot. It's a laser. Oh, it's like a laser with sound. It's a, she was more technical. What was it? Um, crystal. Well, it could be a crystal because they vibrate. Um, crystal, laser. Uh, now, now, here's the thing. Does the, well, I guess the Cuban government would know where these people are staying, but it was interesting how right where the person, okay, but who's going to know the exact desk the guy's going to sit at? And who's going to know the exact where the bed is in the hotel room unless you were like there? Um, it's just funny how it targeted them in certain places, okay, at different times. So it almost looks like an inside job. Mm. Like somebody would have to know where when these people are going to sleep, the time they're going to sleep. You know, it's just really freaky. So are are they implanted? with something i don't know it's like um so any of the if they can do that and they're talking about it being like a laser sound weapon and it could be like the sound you would um like do the dog whistle that a high frequency can't mm -hmm. hear, yeah high frequency it. real high frequency i don't know but um i think that could be a part of what the they're doing with the Manipulation. It could be a sound ma manipulation. It could be vibrational. They could be seeding the clouds. So, what do you guys think? You know, I have more. I just want your your opinions on on this. You, you know, know this Julia. You know that we have a lot of secret technology weaponized oh, yeah. in right. all facets, whether they're using sound or EMP, because now they have it on craft where they can put it on a helicopter and knock out power in a building. You have these devices out there. They use this in the application in the field, just that the public isn't aware of it. But I will tell you this quickly. I know someone, a friend of mine, um, and he was in the first Gulf War in Iraq. And he told me a story that he's seen a craft, a triangular craft go over him. It made no sound. And it was going. I had friends in Iraq that saw triangle crafts mm -hmm. okay so yeah. now he told me that it was going over a certain area and when they went into that area afterwards i think it was the next day they said that the people that were there the iraqi insurgents were complaining of a loud sound that absolutely drove them insane Mm, yes, man. and they do it for crowd control too in the United States. So this has been going wow. on, and but now what you see, what you said, it sounds like they've they've miniaturized it. It's more focused. It's, yes, it's where they can put it on a location. Remember, yes, they're probably testing to see the reaction and how it works. And like you said, it could also be a political aspect here where they may want uh, our ambassadors to get out and. That was my first impression. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it could there could be an underlying theme there, but what better place to test it and where people are exposed and they have their guard down? Oh, than, sure, yeah. You know, than in a local location at like Cuba. So this is something we really need to be concerned about, and I'm sure that, like you said, it was uh, publicly on it was in the racial matter show. So this is yeah, out it was there. just it was the rerun was today. Uh, it was on yesterday. Yeah. And it was in the paper, but it's like nobody really was talking about it for it, it's like the disclosure project. You know, they were at they were at Washington, all these pilots were there and it was a big thing for two and CNN had it on for 2 seconds and you never heard about it again. <laughs> That's what this thing is like. Yeah, CNN, right? <laughs> well, well what else do we got? Well, ABC, CBS, that's what we got. You yeah. Know? But they That's have true. To be talking that's true. about it. They're not, you know, they keep talking about stupid things like emails and Russian probes, but they don't go into these other things that I think are really – I want to know 
It's agenda what driven. To these diplomats, and I want to know if we have weather manipulation because we need rain out west. So why don't they make it rain instead of like hurting us? You know, it's yeah, funny. It's ironic. You got a point. It's ironic she mentions that because remember, California had that drought and then they got inundated with rain for a few months. Right. Texas, the same thing. They suffered a major drought. And then uh, I think it was last year, the year before, they got inundated with a lot of rain. Now, the thing is, and, and just to put a, ra- a rational aspect to this, this is the peak of hurricane season in the Atlantic. Absolutely. You, you right. always get these storms coming off of Africa and they train toward the west and they head to the islands. But you can't ignore the fact that the, the temperatures in the oceans are rising. And as Michael they mentioned are. earlier, this is the fuel that these storms feed on. And it's not just the Atlantic. Look at the typhoons in the, in the Pacific. Oh, yeah. And the yeah. intensity. They're, they're the worst they've been in years, yeah. So there's a lot going on here. And unfortunately, there's more waves that are coming. And we, we, we've we had two major hurricanes here and with devastation, not only here, but in the islands, in the Caribbean, et cetera, and in Cuba. And it's I hate to say this, but uh, unfortunately for all those who suffered in Cuba, by it going over land, Irma actually saved us from getting a Cat 5. Oh, I know. I yeah, yeah. that's like I you know. mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. so but the thing is, we now have Maria. We have a couple of other systems, so we're not. The, the threat is not over. The thing is, the frequency. We haven't had a major hurricane in twelve years hit us though. Right. That's. Yeah. But now all of a sudden they're all hitting us, which is very interesting. Is right after the eclipse, and notice how they're all hitting the U.S. Like in both now. Now we might get one in the Northeast. So. Um, the eclipse has a lot to do with it and the spirit, you know, after the break, I'll go into the spiritual stuff and, and the whole thing with, whenever there's a, a major eclipse, like we just had, there's all kinds of stuff that happens. And you know, a lot of people will say this, they may agree with climate change, but they won't agree that it's the cause is man-made. See there, there's that distinction. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's what a lot of people will say. Uh, uh, many may say, okay, there could be climate change going on, but is it necessarily correlated to the activity of what we do here industrially? Uh, you know, they, the release of carbon into the atmosphere. Now, that's something that they, they'll question. But you can't ignore the facts that the temperature is rising in the oceans. They've been going at record levels on Earth, recorded throughout the globe. It's been going up for the last decade. So, yeah. you, I mean, they'll say that there are cycles that the Earth goes through, and this is just one of those cycles where it's this warming trend. But we have to – we can't no, ignore it. No, it's so fast. It's so fast, this century. And that's scary when you think about – see, I always looked at it this theory, and we have to go to break in a few minutes, but why can't we disrupt the eye with all the technology that we have, even using some type of a I, – I hate to say it, but a bomb – and not, nothing of destructive, but with pressure that can destroy the eye wall. So, you know, something that can cause a pressure outward that can disrupt the eye, make it wobble, lose power. You, you would think that we would have some kind of technology right now that can minimize the impacts of these storms. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. And it doesn't seem like it would be too hard to create. I and mean, the you other know, thing is just... You need cold air. Cold air. Or, or you know, cold... Uh, cold water, uh, you can seed it with, uh, you know, I, I forget the name of the chemical, but you can seed it so that it starts to uh, dissipate. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. Exactly. And the other thing is building so close to the ocean. Um, we're going to have to really start building a little bit away. Um, I know people like the view, but come on. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. What's the point? You're going to lose your house every year. <laughs> it's sad. It really is. But how they how they build Miami, Miami City is right on the water. I mean, come on. It's yeah, like yeah. you have these yeah. tall buildings. <laughs> they were like two, three feet of water. I mean, they couldn't, you know, just build it in the center of the landmass. They had to build it right on the edge of the water. It's like crazy. It, it is. And it's, you know, like you said, it's almost at sea level. And they are concerned. It's beautiful to look at, but 
And they're concerned that in the, you know, in the near future, well, I won't say the near future, but in a few decades, that Miami will be swamped. I, and that, I say that figuratively and literally speaking, but it will be uh, covered in water because of the, the rise of sea levels. Now, oh, people, sure. We're already doing that. The, the pumps are, uh, sometimes they fail. Uh, southern Miami is, where I am, I'm okay. I'm in northern Miami, but this, the, the southern part, they've got pumps going 24 hours. Mm-hmm. And they do get like two, three, they get a, a bad rainstorm. The ocean comes in. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our next break. Um, so let, let's do that. You're listening to the Starborn Connection on KGRA Alternative Talk Radio, the best place on the net, your connection to the multiverse. See you on the other side, folks. I'm getting older and noticing that my body just doesn't work as well as it used to. So I like to keep fit as possible by hitting the gym a few times a week. Recently, I started having a nagging bicep pain and it got so bad I couldn't even lift the weights. When I was complaining about it to a friend, he told me about Angioprim. He said chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in veins and arteries that may cause blockages. You know, after just one week of taking Angioprim, the pain was gone and now I'm back in the gym full strength. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. So to learn more, go to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or talk to a trained consultant. Call angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. You'll feel better with more energy. Call 877-882-7221. Or go to the website, angioprim.com. For years, the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station has been your contact for live UFO paranormal talk radio worldwide, bringing you the top names and research and investigations seven nights a week. Our listeners connect to the KGRA on various platforms like TalkStream Live, TuneIn, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and many more. Now, you can stream your favorite paranormal talk radio shows with our new fully integrated custom KGRA mobile apps for Android and iPhones. Listen to your favorite paranormal talk shows from any mobile device 24-7 free with smartphone or tablet. Utilize custom features to access news, show pages, archives, contests, events, and live interactive chat room. Set set show notification alerts and never miss your favorite live programs. All free and available to download in Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, What? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Your official contact for the best alternative talk on the planet. KGRARadio.com. Welcome back, guys. Uh, We're going to be with you for another half hour tonight. Uh, usually when we don't have a guest, we uh, wrap it up at about 11.30 or so. Uh, so I am going to uh, turn it back over to Julia. Julia has uh, more information for us, and uh, she says it's about 15 minutes. So in the last part of the show, we'll have a little roundtable between the three of us discussing uh, what we're going Is Is there anything going on in the chat room, Bill? Actually, no, they're just enjoying listening to the show and 
commenting on all the things that we just mentioned in the last hour or so. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, Julia, take it well, away. Well, I'm telling you, I'm really excited about this part because, um, you know, this is the spiritual part, the ascension part, and so it ties in with what went on with the eclipse, and there's some positive stuff at the end. So um, what I'm about to say, I, I don't want it to offend anybody or uh, nobody is bad. The storm didn't happen because people are bad. That is the, that's an earth judgmental thing. No, a lot of good people got hurt. A lot of people die in storms that are good. That's not what I'm saying here. Uh, but I'm going to talk about, um, you know, as I, you know, my own intuition and from what I've gotten from the people that I do listen to uh, about, uh, there were predictions that when the eclipse would happen, there would be a lot of intense stuff stirring up. And we've all talked about how when there's a lot of chaos, I um, mean, it's bad when you're going through it, but when it's over, it's like giving birth. You have this beautiful child, you have something new. So that's the positive of it. What I'd like to say is what I've been getting is that this, uh, this is the clearing that has to happen. Now notice the eclipse was straight in the middle of the US um, and all these hurricanes and the fires and then there was an earthquake in uh, Mexico too. That was the biggest earthquake they ever had. Uh, we had the biggest hurricane we ever had. We had the most fires we've ever had. So we were talking about statistics in the beginning. So now we're seeing um, the prediction come true about uh, the eclipse being the one of the astrological things that have to happen right before the big unveiling. The big unveiling meaning everything coming out in the open, disclosure, people becoming awake and aware, we have to start a new society. Uh, we have to start to rethink. So anyway, um, this has to do with the clearing and the cleansing. Uh, a lot of uh, the channelings talk about, and, and from b the Bible as well, and other religious texts, they talk about this time as being the cleansing. And it used to be everybody thought the cleansing meant bill billions of people are going to die, there's only going to be a few people left. Um, this is what the clearing and the cleansing is. No, that's not what it is. Um, Mother Earth feels uh, all the emotions, all the tensions, all the negativity that she's had for millions of years with humans on Earth, 200,000, um, you know, and other extraterrestrial beings that were here before us. So she's releasing just the way when we go through the ascension process personally and we release, we, we transmute and release our negative emotions, Mother Earth is doing that with earthquakes, with volcanoes, with uh, all these hurricanes being so intense, all the rainstorms. You know, it's not just, uh, there's stuff going on in Bangladesh, Italy, there's, there's amazing storms going on, lots of flooding. So she's releasing now. And... Uh, they were also talking about the collective consciousness of the people that get affected. So we're talking, you know, the Texas area, the Florida area, and of course the islands. And culture is a little different in each one of these places. But we have to look at it as the clearing, um, even though it just affected them, it really affects everybody because everybody has family and, and connections with somebody in Florida or somebody in Texas. They're pretty big and they're, Florida is basically retirement. So you um, have a lot of grandparents. Um, my mother was there. You know, it was like a lot of people are connected. Plus, you know, you have empathy for people. So even though it didn't hit you directly, it still hits you and it makes you question, well, what would my life be like if I lost all my possessions and I lost my house? What I want to live, you know, talking about us being materialistic people, uh, you collect your whole life um, possessions. Most people, when they were fleeing, 
they took pictures with them because they can't be replaced. Um, the pictures from like 30, 40 years ago, your wedding pictures, your you know, confirmation pictures, these pictures were not, you know, unless they were digitalized, they're, they're, they can be, you know, that's it. So you have to like start questioning, um, well, what's my life purpose? Uh, I've lost everything. I have to start again. How can I start again? Who am I? What do I want to do? So it brings those questions, not that these people never questioned it, but it, it brings that to all of our attention. So these people, a lot of the people that got affected um, consciously, it's the only way for them to ascend, to open up their minds because they, before they came here, when they decided to come uh, as a soul, come to earth, they made that contract. We're going to at this time be hit uh, with this hurricane. It's, I'm going to lose stuff but I'm going to awaken. I'm going to remember who I am. So this is what a lot of the channelings were that I was hearing. And it's not a clearing where everybody gets, you know, there, there's like a world war and no, it's, it's, it's just these things that are happening around the world that are causing people to question. And, and then of course we united, we weren't Democrat. We weren't Republican. We were uniting to look at the eclipse, we were uniting to send aid to Texas and aid to Florida and the islands. So it, it's sometimes it takes a big disaster to bring everybody together because we want to, we have so much duality now, which we have to put, we have to come together. That's part of ascension. So it's not that these people are bad. I'm not saying that. It's not. They're very good people. It's just the consciousness part of it. It really starts to wake people up. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be more things, I'm sure. But I think as more people become awake and aware, and also if you're not afraid of it, like it, it can be scary. Yeah, we got fires here. We got earthquakes. We got five hurricanes. Um, don't concentrate on it. Don't be scared of it. Continue your meditations. Uh, if you hear about something, uh, you know, meditate on it. Like, yeah, there's another hurricane coming. Let's meditate on that. Um, get rid of it. But it's, you know, the fear of it. You recognize the fear, especially if it's coming to, to your state. Recognize the fear. Thank it and tell it it has to go now. Send it up with a vial of flame because that you don't want to feed the negative energy that's out there. So that's, that is the spiritual side of, um, so mother earth is releasing. Uh, yeah, she could be manipulated too by harp or, or whatever other organization is out there that can happen, but all these things are going to get revealed to us. We're going to find out. Um, and maybe this Cuban investigation, it's part of the unveiling. It, it was on, MSNBC, so maybe somebody else will pick it up and they'll start talking about it. Um, and then people will be like, well, I got this tower here and I have headaches every night. So why is that? You know, so, so, uh, so definitely um, the positive thing is that it was intense. It was horrible. And I can't imagine what it would be like to lose all my possessions. But, uh, but they're not me. They're, they're not who I am. I can't replace myself or my family, but I can replace a house. You know, I can replace, I can build again somewhere else. I'm pretty versatile, but, you know, people get attached to their comfortable, everything's so comfortable and they don't move spiritually. So it is a big push for that, for everybody. So it's not the, the so it's just a clearing of the consciousness to, to move. It's a cleaning. It's like an enema. <laughs> wow. Like, wow. Yeah. So, but the good news is the other side, and we're, you know, I don't know how long. I'm not a, you know, I don't, it might be for a little while that we might have some more things like this. But the important thing is that a year, two years from now, you're going to look back and go, so many things have changed. The government's changed. The banking systems change. Things are easier. People love each other. People, you know, it could even be faster. 
because because it really has speeded up like when it's really intense like this it speeds up the whole process so we're definitely ascending faster um we're on an accelerated timeline so i think it's really positive but we do have to think you know definitely give to the red cross um there are organizations from your church or synagogue that might be taking you know we gave some things um it just um you know, really help out because the government, they're pretty limited. But I must say, I, I do have to say this before. I have one more thing to say. I was really impressed with the National Guard. Um, you know, of course, you know, all the conspiracy theory people were saying, oh, the National Guard's going to go in. It's going to be uh, martial law. No, it was not. Um, they were bringing water. They were bringing food. Everybody was so happy to see them. Yeah. They kept people from going back into neighborhoods because they were flooded. Uh, it was, you know, there, there were people looting. Um, and Bill knows this. You know, everybody in the Keys have guns. I mean, everybody has guns. They can protect their property. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a whole different mindset from the Keys to Miami to Tampa. It's like a whole different, you know. So, um, so I think they did a good job. Of course, there was a curfew because if you're out at night, uh, there were alligators walking around in Miami. They were walking around neighborhoods. So, yeah, in the middle of the night, you're not going to be able to see an alligator. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess. So, you know, they're just, just they're actually helping us. And, and um, the Navy went down with, with supplies to St. Thomas, and they actually need to send more ships. So, you know, you can look at the military as, you know, you know, but you can also look at them as, you know, supportive when, when these things happen. So, um, you know, I think um, that being said, you know, um, I don't think it was a, a martial law situation. I think it was, you know, it definitely needed whatever is there. And a lot of my friends, they're back to normal. Um, their houses, you know, they might not have electricity for a day or two, but they're going out to eat. <clears throat> in uh miami and outside of tampa and you know so unfortunately it's not that way in the islands there's nothing left the only so, the only uh, thing the only thing julia even though i mean people are going through the most dire circumstances yeah. there and you see how people pull together and they're helping neighbor absolutely. the only thing is you also have that negative element where you had people looting in fort lauderdale and I'm right. Oh, right. Yeah. And I'm so glad that they arrested some of these idiots and taking advantage of those, you know, like I said, most vulnerable. Then, And this is why a lot of people don't want to leave their communities because they're afraid you're going to yeah. have this element come in. And th that's what happens. And, and people were concerned about that in the Keys. You know, well, how are we going to get back in? How do we know that they had people on boats, on rafts going into the Yeah, town. yeah. So, you know, it's it's you hope that the <sighs> National Guard and all these other groups get involved to secure the area and do what they need to do to protect uh, people's property, even though, like the governor said, and he did such a great job, Governor Scott. He, he did. He really did. Oh, my did. God, what a great guy. It's your yeah. life. Your life matters. It cannot be replaced. Material things can be. Your house will be rebuilt, but your life cannot. He did a great job. Yeah, he did. He did. One thing One thing that I, I want to bring up, though, too, and uh, Julia, this is kind of like, um, I don't know, it, it's, it's kind of something that's happening that's not going to spoil the good stuff, but kind well, of like uh, I need your explanation or what okay. you think about it there are there are people now that are claiming that the 23rd of september is going to be the end of the world yeah and have you heard they've that they've been saying that every year by the way every oh i know that i that. know that but september I know it's 23rd not. baby <laughs> <laughs> you know what i think is going to happen on september 23rd julie is going to get up have her cup of coffee meditate clean her exactly. house all of a sudden it's six o'clock at night and i have to make dinner that's what's going to happen on the 23rd. Nothing different. Yeah. But, you know, um, there might be, you know, there was talk about a terrorist attack in New York. There was, you know, there's terrorist attacks every day. We just had one in London. Um, no. Um, if there is some, I hope there isn't. If there, I mean, I'm not, 
if there if something happens, it happens. I it's not the, going to be the end of the world. What I was hearing was maybe a terrorist attack, but it wasn't going to be um, a global. You know, it was just yeah, well, be located no. in, in an area. But I don't know. Um, well, I've well they, they they had a terrorist attack in England this week uh, on the. They did. Uh, Somebody set a fire. Set a fire on. And it didn't, on, uh, it didn't explode completely. It's yeah, exactly. Like half exploded, so it could have been really bad. You bet. Yeah, so that could be what they were talking about, because there were some things that's that were telling us <clears throat> that something might happen in New York or happen in another city. So, but that's been going on. Like uh, the timelines do keep changing, and the more there's so many people meditating becoming awake and aware and that really affects it because we're focusing on our heaven on earth which doesn't include terrorism because peace is the outcome so this stuff doesn't happen so um you know the more you focus that something's going to happen it might or it might happen to you you know because you're focused on all this you're bringing that vibration to you um, you you know, if you're happy and you're joyful, no matter what, it doesn't mean bad things don't happen, but you keep a high vibration through your meditation, through doing things you enjoy, like dancing or whatever, music. You just keep your vibration up and, and you start attracting positive things. So, look, I, I, I don't I, – I did feel something was going to happen, but now I kind of don't, but um, – I don't think it's going – there's – when ascension comes or, or the process of ascension um, where our gov- government system changes, where society kind of works together for the equality of everybody, that's our world changing. That, that's the end of the world. That's the end of the world that we knew, and there's a new world coming that's much better, you know, the fifth dimensional consciousness world. So – no, it's not the end of the world. And it's funny because people are still making plans for next year. <laughs> They're still making – I love well, it. Well, yeah, yeah. It's the end of the world, but, but you know, uh, nobody's taking the money out of the bank. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think I think – People like to have fun with that stuff, and and they uh, yeah, they, yeah. there are a certain group of people that kind of uh, take it seriously. You know, they're more or less fanatical, uh, and, and then it becomes newsworthy, which you know, kind of a waste of news. Uh, but uh, Look, no, I think mean something might. I don't know. I'm not. You yeah. know, I don't see it. I don't. See well, it. you know, if you look it's at the about me, you know. If you look at the past, I, I think I remember that uh, every year of my life every since September. I was fourteen, <laughs> I've heard. Uh, well, don't oh, it's you gonna think the Doomsday. hurricane was like it? <laughs> don't well, you think yeah, two I mean, big hurricanes is enough. We're not done yet. We still have uh, more hurricanes yeah. to come. So you okay. know, we'll another, see what happens. Another thing too is look what happened with Mexico with the earthquake and all this. Oh right, the biggest earthquake ever. We have and to in Mexico, and the solar activity uh, was raised. Yeah, we we had a coronal mass ejection. My right? computers have been doing yeah. weird things, and the, the thing computers is, computers and my cable have been doing weird things. You know something? This is the bottom line, though. If anything was imminent that the governments around the globe were aware of, we would not be aware, because they don't want to cause the panic. They don't want to cause the chaos. We it, it would we would be the last ones to know unless it was absolutely necessary, and I mean last resort. But they would never tell us if there was a, a big asteroid that they impending doom. Well, you know what? If that asteroid hit, we wouldn't even know it. We'd be gone. Exactly. Now listen, if you want, if you want uh, entertainment about that there's a show on called Salvation. I love it. I love it addresses Salvation. just yes. that issue. Yeah, and, and it's a good show too. It's not bad. So if you're if you're into uh, you know, meteors striking the earth, uh, that's a good show. It's a good show. <laughs> and the politics <laughs> behind it, and the government, I, yeah. you know. Yeah, and that that I think is exactly what would happen too. Exactly. You know. It's a good show. And and they don't realize that from history, we're we're looking at this now, uh, from recent history, from the two hurricanes, when there's something going to happen or something that happens that is bad or negative, people pull together, 
They drop all of their facades. They put their egos aside. They come together and help. So I would think that that would be the reaction we'd get too. Uh, we'd all come together and we'd find a way to push the media out of the way. Or, yep. or the Russian theory is, as it's uh, leaving the area and it's a potential threat in the future, send a nuke at it. <laughs> That's what exactly. I mean. Well, yeah. <laughs> you hear some of these theories and I'm like, whoa. And you know what? Because the conspiracy theories have always been around. They're always going to continue. This oh. always, always happens. It, it always happens. So this is, we've heard it so many times. Oh, Y2K and 2000. But it's oh, yeah. there to spread fear. And when you're afraid, you can't, you know, you can't move forward. You can't raise your vibration you know you're, you're just living in fear and you're attracting what fear attracts bad stuff yeah. happening you know yeah, well, it's, it's, you. it's always it's always so much more exciting yeah, to you wanna, think like, that you're gonna die you know a terrible exactly. death oh. <laughs> i think the best thing is that people need to get more in, into focus of meditation being at peace with their surroundings the true meaning of spirituality being work on yourself exactly. and then it affects everything else exactly. love yourself exactly and, and love yourself and, and and it changes your you know you, it'll change the drama around you when you meditate people always tell me you know my husband he's like oh my god over the past two years you're so calm you're so mm. you know yeah. we don't we don't argue he still does things that annoy me but i walk away i don't respond like i used to and that that when you get rid of the drama it just changes your whole life. The people I've attracted into my life are, are just unbelievable. I mean, I'm traveling all over the country, going to retreats. And I'm doing what I enjoy doing. And, you know, it's, you know, but if I was listening to conspiracy, like I used to years ago. I, oh, man. Yeah, I drove myself I listened nuts. I to them all and I was always <laughs> afraid. And nothing moved. Since I stopped and I started with the Ascension stuff, everything changed. You know, yeah. it was like I rose past that. It doesn't mean you can't look at something and go, oh, that's interesting. But it's the people that spend their whole day. Like, oh, that's God, all yeah. they do, you know. Investigating uh, ad nauseum something that, you know, really doesn't matter, a, a conspiracy theory. And just... But there but there are conspiracies out there, you have to admit. There, oh, there absolutely. are some. Uh, absolutely. And... And you can tell, I think, uh, between those that really deserve attention and those that are just uh, fodder. Right. Exactly. Agreed. The, the thing is that we all, like I said, we all have to find some way to find what we have in common than not. And, exactly. And just form a communication. I mean, and it's, it's an exchange of different um, institutional backgrounds and cultures and like, for, for, exa for example, and we're, we're coming close to the end of the show, but I'll be quickly. I always go to all the different festivals. I enjoy it. Of all ethnicities, I enjoy it. It makes you fun. It yeah. makes it fun. And I'm yeah. learning the culture. Gives and, you joy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and then it's an exchange. And I'll go, like, I, yesterday I went to a Greek festival with my mother. Next week, a couple of weeks, I'm going to the German festival in Hunter Mountain. I just love going and experience the culture and the music and the food yeah, and yeah. the people. Why is that so difficult for some people? I don't get Good it. Good question. Uh, we can have a whole show on just that. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> I, I live in, I lived in New York most of my life, and that, we have, there's so many different – it, it, it's the pin, you know. It's the pinnacle of having all these different people, diversity, living in one area. And to me, it was a great experience. It, it was just that's how you get to know people, and they're your neighbor. And especially with the population, and if you live in, like, say, in an apartment building with a hundred people in it, you know, you're seeing these people every day, and you're in exchange. Yeah, so yeah. It's you know, it's just one of those things. I think that hopefully, it's like she said. Like uh, Julia said, there's going to be a point where something happens where there's a new beginning. There's going to be some kind of a climactic point where uh, it's happening now. Yeah, with with the hurricanes. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. But it's unfortunate that it takes a catastrophe to bring people right. together. Yeah, we should be that, doing that's... that all the time. Yeah. 
But that's very strange. Why why can't it be something good that pulls us together? I mean, I mean it kind of does, but not as not as strong as something uh, like a catastrophe or something negative. Look at all we the really people. do pull together. Look at Harvey. Look at all the volunteers from all mm. over the country that came with their boats trying to save people and help yeah. people. I have friends that came with, with rented semi trucks and came with donations and drove down. Exactly. But you know, Bob. Excuse me. Yeah, Bob. Even cruise ships were were uh, yes. supplying ships people with native. rooms. Right. Sure. That, that was amazing. And see that you just made another point that we need to focus on the people that suffered on those islands. The mm. U.S. Absolutely. Virgin. Oh, I mean, it. Barbuda got devastated. Some of these islands got totally. There's left. not a tree left. Ninety-five percent of Beautiful Barbuda. palm trees. Not a house yeah. left. Not a Flat. police station. A store. Exactly. These Supplies. people are living in tents in ninety degree humidity. Not even I mean, tents. Yeah, they need help. Yeah. And the thing kidding. is, we have like you both mentioned. Now there's more storms, and unfortunately, they've got this hurricane. It's a tropical storm right now, but uh, Hurricane Maria they're projecting to become, and it's going to hit these islands all over again. And there's My more goodness. on the way. <laughs> So if these people are in dire need now and they already got to worry about what's it's what's coming. So we right. need, we need this is dire. We need to help them now. We need to help them now. Or yeah. get them yeah. off the islands because they have no shelter. They need to be evacuated in any means necessary. Yeah, there's no place to go for them now. Exactly. So. Oh, Lord. Wow. But they took the Americans to Puerto Rico. I think I think so. I think they like yeah. Like, yeah, they they rescued the Americans and took them to Puerto Rico, but they need to do something. They really know. do. They, and oh, let's just wow. hope. Let's just hope and you know send our positive thoughts out there for that the people will you know rise up and they'll survive and they'll do what's necessary because like I said, there's still more coming. So we we all have to pray and hope that everything works out for these people and. You know, God bless all of them. Right, well, right. Guys, on that note, what do you think, huh? Pretty good show? Oh, yeah. Yep. Very good. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, whenever we can, you know, talk about something great in need, positive or negative, uh, with a lot of emotion behind it, I think it's good. Um, okay, so uh, next week, I don't have anything lined up yet, but stay tuned to Facebook and Twitter, and uh, I will definitely have something going. Uh, I guess until then, we can say good night, God bless, and thanks for listening, folks. Come on back next week. We'll do it again. <laughs>